Hey everyone, it's Joe from Monarch. I wanted to give a walkthrough of the new section that you might have noticed called Recurring. Recurring was a new feature that we've worked on over the last few months. Uh, it was a pretty big change to Monarch since it kind of overhauled the way our merchant system works and allowed for us to be able to detect uh, bills, uh, subscriptions, uh, paychecks, like anything that is basically kind of recurring on a regular basis. So if you click the Recurring section, uh, you'll notice that there's kind of two subsections to recurring, uh, the default, which is called upcoming, and then there's another one called all merchants. The upcoming section will always show you what the current month is, and it gives you a calendar view of the month with all of your recurring uh, transactions laid out on it. So for this example, the current month is October, and you can see a number of transactions kind of already shown on the calendar here. Uh, if you are just signing up for Monarch and maybe you just connected your accounts, you might actually get uh, greeted with kind of a getting started page. And if you click the, the big orange getting started button, it will actually scan all your transactions and populate the calendar for you. I just happen to have done that kind of for the sake of uh, the example here. You'll notice on the calendar that there's four different colors of bars that kind of show up. There's green, yellow, red, or blue. Uh, the green uh, color here just indicates that there was an expected recurring transaction on that day and Monarch was able to actually find a real transaction that um, matched the expected one. If you see a yellow one, that just means that the expected transaction was different uh, than the actual transaction that showed up. And so in this case, uh, the example is uh, the recurring charge was expected to be $500 and it was a little bit higher at $580. And so this just helps you kind of see if there was uh, an increase maybe in uh, your bill or subscription um, or something that was kind of an anomaly. Um, you'll also notice a red one. If the red color shows up, that just means that the payment um, is past due. Uh, there's a margin of error of kind of plus or minus three days on this. And so uh, sometimes there might be a charge on a Saturday or a Sunday that doesn't actually happen until the next business day on Monday or Tuesday. And so there's a little bit of a, a kind of a buffer on it, but if there's a mispayment here, you'll see it kind of showed up as a, as a red mark. And then the final one is the blue uh, bar here, which is just any upcoming expected transaction uh, that the date hasn't actually gotten to that yet. And so there's no expectation that a transaction has taken place. And so, yeah, hopefully that's a quick way to kind of scan through the calendar and just see kind of the status of all of your bills and subscriptions and paychecks and things like that. If you scroll to the bottom of the page here, uh, the same information is shown kind of in these cards. And so you'll see kind of all the late red ones here grouped up, all of the uh, upcoming ones uh, shown in blue here, and then all the completed ones, which are uh, all the kind of green ones or even the yellow ones in here. So that's kind of the upcoming page. If you go to all merchants, this page now shows all merchants regardless of the month. Uh, and so you can see just pretty quickly here which merchants are set up with recurring charges, what the frequency is, uh, when the next payment uh, is due, and even the category or the account uh, that was used for the last transaction. This is kind of helpful just to see which ones you've kind of set up, especially if you have ones that are not monthly, if you have like yearly subscriptions or quarterly um, payments or something like that, um, it's a little bit easier to see kind of a comprehensive list um, in this tab. The other thing that's kind of useful on this page is there's a filter option. And so you can actually pick a particular account and filter this whole page for just that account. Uh, that might be particularly helpful if you uh, change credit cards or maybe you had a card lost or stolen and you need to change a whole bunch of subscriptions over to a new card. You can kind of quickly go into Monarch here and filter for that card to see which ones uh, you actually need to kind of sort out. So yeah, that's kind of, uh, in a nutshell, how you can manage uh, subscriptions that are recurring uh, once they're already set up. Uh, the other thing that you can do here is if there's anything that was missed or you just want to manually uh, set up the recurring system, you can go into Add Recurring, and you can actually add any of your merchants here from uh, this kind of search box. Um, and so by simply going in here, you can just kind of search for one and select it, and you'll be able to add it to the calendar. and. Um, create any of the settings that are needed for the recurring section. But if you are looking to add recurring, the way we usually recommend people do this is actually directly from the transaction list itself. So if you go into the transaction list here, you can take any individual transaction, uh, like this example is a uh, homeowner insurance payment from State Farm, 
and you can go up and actually in this kind of overflow menu mark it as recurring. And by doing it this way, it actually pre-populates the amount and the date and all these other um, fields that you'd have to manually specify if you were setting it up. When Monarch scans for new transactions as they come in from your bank account, uh, it will actually fill this in and detect any of them. And so you may not ever need to do this. Um, it's purely if you want to kind of manually manage stuff um, or correct or edit things. And so by going in here, all you have to do is really select the frequency. And now you can mark this transaction and this merchant as recurring. The other thing to kind of note on the merchant transaction recurring um, setup here is not every transaction from a merchant may be recurring or not. A uh, very common example of this is uh, like a, the Disney Plus subscription where uh, you have a $10 charge every month, and but you want to rent a movie once for $20. So that $20 transaction may not be recurring. And so you can actually go in here and mark any individual transaction as not recurring, and that will remove it from the calendar and exclude it from the expected kind of recurring transaction. Another good example of that might be Amazon, where you have some subscriptions that are regular charges happening on a regular basis, and then some you know kind of one-off purchases. And so the the setting of recurring or not is done at the merchant level, but individual transactions can be managed kind of separately from that. So yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. There's a couple other sections where recurring has kind of um, beefed up the rest of the product. You might notice here in the filter and sort for transactions, there's a new option to actually filter for recurring transactions. Uh, that was a new one added after the recurring section launched. If you go into cash flow, there's also a new merchant section here. This will show you all of your merchants. Uh, even logos were added pretty recently to this, um, and you can actually click into these and see uh, kind of the individual you know, merchant breakdown, very similar to categories or groups um, that were there before. And then finally, there's uh, one other thing that we've done uh, with recurring, which is a merchant uh, settings list here. And so if you go into your username, um, kind of in your like global settings for your account, you can go into merchants and you'll see just all merchants across your entire transaction list. This is an easy way to also get to the edit modal here uh, to adjust the settings for any of the recurring merchant properties. You can search if you have hundreds or thousands of merchants. It's a quick way to kind of search and then merge or deduplicate stuff. Um, as we've kind of beefed up a lot of this, uh, there's uh, just a huge number of merchants that you might want to manage or kind of edit and um, configure. And so this page kind of gives you a quicker way to, uh, to get into the merchant settings since that is dependent on a lot of the recurring stuff. So yeah, that's it. Uh, we have future plans to add it to like the plan section or to do like forecasted balances based on upcoming recurring charges. So there's a lot more work to do, but hopefully this is a, a nice feature to kind of get you started with just being able to, you know, manage the subscriptions and kind of look at the status of things uh, separately from your transaction list. If you do have feedback on how we can make things better, uh, if you go into help and support here and go to feature requests, um, that's a great place to vote on things on the roadmap or submit ideas to the team uh, so we can kind of get feedback on recurring or anything else that comes to mind. So hopefully you found this useful and hopefully you find the recurring section useful. Thanks.